Yeah, growth has been pretty spectacular. So we just wrapped and announced our 2020 results. We're talking about 87% growth year on year, and we're projecting something similar for this coming year. So we're going to continue to grow pretty aggressively. And to put that in perspective, we've been in market for about five years. Um, after our four, not even five years, I should say, after four years or so, we hit a million customers. It took some of the other spectacular companies in the US in this space, like USAA, 47 years to get to that metric. So you're talking about something like five to 10 times faster growth than incumbents have experienced in the past, a real order of magnitude increase. And it's not only the top line, we're seeing increases in all of our key performance indicators, including our marketing efficiency. So we doubled our business, even as we halved our costs of acquiring new customers. So everything's going pretty much in, in a positive direction. What about Texas in particular? You did talk a little bit about how, I think a, a one fourth of your customers are in the state of Texas. So how are you impacted by the weather situation and, and how, how long is that set to last as a financial potential hit for you? So the results we announced today were for 2020 and the, the Texas freeze really hit in February of 2021. So we haven't announced too much, but I will tell you that it's a big deal, um, not only for people in Texas, but for our company, because as you say, about a quarter of our customers are in Texas. So for us, it was really a, a test both of our people and our um, technology, as well as our financial model. And what we found is that we saw a huge influx, a real surge of claims, thousands of claims in a very short period of time. And I'm very pleased to say, and indeed very proud of the team who were able to handle that surge and deliver stunning quality of service to our customers, thousands of claims, but most of them are already closed and the others are closing pretty quickly. So this is a, a time for us to test ourselves. We promise amazing service and I'm really pleased that the team was able to live up to it. And it's also a test of our financial models. You know, we, we have a pretty unorthodox structure of reinsurance, and it is performing the purpose that we assigned to it. So even though we are going to see a spike in our loss ratio in the first quarter because of this major catastrophe, our guidance for the quarter and for the year don't reflect any major dampening despite that. So we really are seeing that both our people and our financial models are delivering as we'd hoped. You've uh, teased, Daniel, uh, a pending product launch. Uh, are you able to share with us what that is, which sector? So we've changed a lot in terms of our product. You're quite right. When we IPO'd just a few months ago, we were a monoline business. We only sold homeowners, you know, renters, condo, but homeowners insurance. And in the short intervening months, we've launched pet insurance, which is doing spectacularly well, and life insurance. We're crossing invisible boundaries in the insurance space to go from health to life to property and casualty. And you're absolutely right, we're not done. And we did hint that we've got a major launch coming. In fact, we have more people working on this yet to be announced product than on any of those other products that I just mentioned. So it's a source of great excitement internally, but I'm sorry, Wilfred, to disappoint you. I'm not gonna announce it right keep, now, keep, sorry. Keep smiling if it's auto insurance. <laughs> Does that count? <laughs> <laughs> there we go, I think we've got it, Sarah.